Hey traders and happy Sunday to you. Each week I go over some trade setups and ideas as well as my own positions for the week ahead. And in this video, we are gonna be covering some things like gold, the dollar, and the US indices going into this week. It is Sunday, of course. I do this every week. Make sure to thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are new and let's jump in. So the first one I actually wanna start with is gold here. And gold has been on an absolute run to start out this year. In fact, look, this is uh, from January here. Uh, this, this is pretty much started out just hot for January and already gold is up a monstrous 5.3%, which is actually pretty impressive for gold. The price of gold doesn't move all that much, uh, but Forex traders love it because with leverage, it can be a pretty insane uh, mover. So here's my thoughts on gold. Gold right now is bullish. Bullish until proven otherwise. We can see this thing from a price action standpoint, looks very strong. And looking at this uh, in terms of support and resistance market structure, we have a pretty nice run that we've seen uh, with support being formed around this previous level at 1900. That's a big round number play. And in my opinion, if you get a pullback into that area sometime this week, uh, it could actually be an opportunity to look for continuation moves, in my opinion. Until price breaks sort of this upward trajectory that we have on the price of gold, uh, I am pretty much looking to be predominantly long. I made some money on the long side here this past week. We took a signal inside of the VIP group. In fact, let me show you that just so you can kind of see what that looks like. I'll pull it up right here. So I was long the S&P 500 and gold, both of which ended up being nice profitable trades for us to start out the year. Uh, you can see there's the gold price. So I bought gold at 1833, wrote it up to about 1900 before closing out for a profit. Uh, and then also the S&P 500 trade that I had just absolutely rocketed, which was uh, fantastic. Ended up being uh, both of those quite profitable trades that I'm looking to potentially get back into going into this week week. Uh, but we're going to have to look for some trading setups, of course. And if I take those trades, you'll see them inside of the VIP Discord channel. Right now, I do want to say this is the absolute last chance to join our VIP group for a discount. We are doing 20% off if you use the code YTVIP at checkout. The links for that are down below in the description. If you'd like to join us, it is a great spot to be in. We've had a great start to the year, and I expect 2023 to continue to be an awesome year uh, for trading. We do also have a new analyst joining us this week, or uh, it's it's, a, it's an old analyst joining us back full time. His name is Frank. He's going to be with us inside of the live room trading. So you'll get my trade alerts. You'll get Frank's trade alerts and uh, Ivan's as well. So we've got coaching webinars and all sorts of stuff. So feel free to check it out. Link is in the description with your promo code there for that 20% off. So the price of gold looks incredibly strong, like I said. So pullback plays could be in order just looking for continuation moves. I think a first attempt could be around that 1900. And if it does decide to pull back deeper, somewhere around that 1890, I'm sorry, 1880 area here where we have previous highs and then also the key breakout right there with this green candle. A pullback to those areas look like bullish setups in my opinion. And if those fail, then of course we'll have to reevaluate. But for starters, I would imagine price action should find some levels of support off of those areas uh, going into this week if we in fact get a pullback. Now that's a big if. Let's move on and take a look at another one. Real quick, the dollar. The dollar has absolutely crumbled. Here's your four hour chart and you can see uh, 105.6 was a little bit of a rally, but we're very far off our highs around 114, 115 that we tagged back last year. This year, it seems very struggling uh, or, or very tough. A lot of struggle for the dollar bulls uh, as things have basically fallen apart underneath lows. Ever since we took out these lows, it was just more pain for the dollar. We broke, we retested briefly before finding sellers coming right back in. So for this one, same kind of concept except inverted for the uh, for the dollar bulls. This thing is bearish until proven otherwise. And in my opinion, pullbacks on the dollar actually look like sell side opportunities. And if we expand this level out here to include some of this consolidation, you can see it lines up pretty nice with this 38.2% retracement and resistance level. So if price gets a bit of a rally going here on the dollar this week, right? I would say be very cautious looking for that sell continuation move uh, to occur on a proper retest. There's, you've got to think there's a lot of dollar bulls from a price action standpoint who are wanting to be short on the dollar. They want to be long gold. They want to be long the euro, the pound, et cetera, against the dollar, but they're waiting for that pullback. pullback. And that pullback to me looks like around 103.5, let's call it. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that uh, for, for this week on the US dollar. Now we're gonna pivot here and I wanna show you guys just the uh, the overall edge finder bias here going into this week. We'll take out the neutral readings. What I'm doing here is I'm just filtering for strong buys, strong sells, 
um, sells and buys. And what this is gonna do is we take a look at several indicators here across the top of the screen. You have COT data, which is smart money tracking, retail sentiment, seasonality, trend reading, GDP growth, inflation, unemployment, and interest rates. What this software does is it takes all of these factors and it lines them up by score and generates this column here, which gives us our overall score, which equates to biases on the left. This is how every day of the week when I trade, I essentially find my watch list. So I, I start here on this page, just go to watch this page right here if you had the edge finder. Um, and so what I'm looking for is basically for opportunities on this list. And what you'll see here is that we have the indices showing up as possible buys this week, which I will be very happy to try and pick up on some pullbacks. And if we flip around, what we have is we have some sells, like the pound crosses seem very sell heavy. You've got pound Swiss, pound Aussie, pound New Zealand, pound yen, and pound dollar on the list as well. So I'd like to start with some of the pound pairs and then wrap back and take a look at some of the indices. And so um, you guys may have known, I, I, I recently took a lot of uh, some big profit off of the S&P 500. I traded that one long. I'm looking for an opportunity to get back into that one this week. And then also, of course, pound USD here. Um, on the sell side is the bias, but here's the thing, right? Here's your daily chart. We've formed a bottom. I really ideally would like to see, before trying to get sell on, uh, get into some sort of sell with this, I'd like to see levels of support here actually get broken, right? So I'd like to see something come back and actually break through the lows to form some sort of structure to the downside. So I'm looking for failure before trying to get involved with the pound USD. If you're a different style of trader, maybe you'll find something, you know, some pattern or something that you like uh, to be selling in these areas. But for me, what I would like to see is I'd like to see momentum pick up and actually break through levels of support. And then I'm looking for retest sells to continue going into this week. So of course, this is a bit of a ways away considering this is a daily chart and it's not likely we're gonna get underneath those lows this week. It's possible, but not particularly likely based on the average true range of these daily bars. Um, now you might be able to get something a little bit lower time frame uh, going. So here's your four hour chart and you might look for some failure here. You might look for uh, if you're really sell heavy, maybe you're looking for this level of support. This is a pretty key spot on the chart. If you look left, you've got 1.21 here. This level holding really nice for the bulls. So broke, retest and shot off that level. What you'd want as a seller, if you're if you're like me and I'm taking a sell bias on this, on this currency, uh, currency pair, I'd wanna see this thing fail, right? I'd wanna see it fall apart at this level of support, showing me that, okay, sellers have taken over this area and any pullback, I'm gonna look for continuation sells on the pound USD. So this is what I'm talking about. Even though the edge finder has a bearish bias on a lot of pound crosses, what I'm looking for is the technicals to actually come in and align with that fundamental and sentiment analysis that we get from the edge finder. So the edge finder, what it does is, we've talked about this often, but many traders look at technical analysis. This is the most common things that every trader looks at. Then you also have fundamental analysis, which is this category over here, right? Understanding the economies of different economy, uh, of different countries, inflation in each country, unemployment, and interest rates offered by their central banks. Many traders do not even pay attention to this. They completely ignore it. The edge finder assists basically by helping you to look at fundamental analysis, but it also includes sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis is basically the study of like watching what institutional traders are buying or selling, which we can pretty much see in this category by itself. Self. We'll take a look at the smart money tracker in a second. I'll show you that. Um, and then also the retail crowd. What's the retail crowd buying and selling? And we can read into that using the edge finder. So the edge finder, what it does is most traders know this, but they don't do this and this. The edge finder assists by giving us a way to look at all three sections and fully building out our analysis on a pair. If you're only looking at the chart and you don't look at any of the other things, you could be missing some really important data that the edge finder can help you find. So if I take a look at the smart money tracker, um, it'd be very interesting to see where the pound stands on this list. And what you can see is that if we are looking right here, let me highlight this so we can all see it a little bit easier. So the pound, right? If we're looking at the pound specifically, we can read into this and we can see that 64.51% of the contracts open on the futures market by the non-commercial traders. I know that was a lot, but basically the short answer, this is hedge funds, uh, small banks, in, you know, institutional traders. They're net short on the pound, 64.5%. So they have a net short interest in the pound, right? Very small compared to the 35.49% uh, 
long position, right? So when we think about the pound, right, we want to understand what big money is buying and selling. And the edge finder, again, helps us visualize that. Comparatively speaking, we could go take a look at gold. Gold is on the other end of the spectrum. Lots of buy interest from big money. Big money is long gold, 72% long positions. That's a heavy, uh, that's a heavy buy rating from uh, institutional traders, right? So understanding these things is gonna be important to under building a bias, right? Before we even look at the chart, everybody looks at the technical chart, but understanding the bias is important before you actually start lobbing trades into your account. We like to take a full look. So I mentioned also the S&P and the NASDAQ. I'd like to show you guys this. So I took the S&P 500 long last week, made some good money trailing stops on this one. Um, unfortunately, not hold, didn't hold it into the close, would have been nice. I got stopped out on this pullback here. So still made great money. We bought this one. Uh, let me see, where did we buy this one? Let me make sure I say this correctly. So off the daily chart, we bought down in these lows. We called that signal outside in the group. Let me show you, make sure I'm correct about this. So bought the S&P 500 at 38.31. So 38.31 right around here. So we bought 38.31. Uh, this would have been the entry and we rode that one up and we closed out of that on a lower time frame here this week. So a very nice trade and looking actually to get back into this trade. So now marking up the S&P 500, I'd like to show you guys the edge finders view on the S&P 500 specifically. If we go indices and we go look at the S&P, we have indices, we also have gold and other things as well. Um, so what I'm looking at is the S&P 500 specific chart. And what we see now is that lots of things are lining up. This is really exciting because I am looking to actively get long the S&P. I'm looking to trade this thing on the long side as long as I still see the signals I'm looking for. So projections are to the upside there for the S&P uh, as they have been. We've been making some money off that one recently. Trend to the upside. Seasonality, uh, the month of January tends to be slightly positive for us. Take a look at GDP growth, inflation, unemployment. These things are favoring more bullishness for the um, for the S&P. With that recent decline in inflation, that's a positive indicator for the S&P 500. We also have unemployment numbers looking healthy uh, relative to that. And then money supply also healthy as well. So all of these things to say, the S&P 500 is on my watch list for a bullish bias. And again, we can always see individual charts, what we, uh, what we get in each category, what scores we get, and that's gonna help build a bias. So now when I go look at the S&P 500 over here, I am going to be looking for technical setups. So ideally a pullback into support would be where I'm looking for possible buy setups on the S&P. And if I draw from swing low to swing high, that gives you a 50%. If I extend this out to the full picture, that 38.2% comes into play. It's a bit of a squeeze to the downside here. It would need to get back down into 39.25, but I'd honestly, I'd probably try and pick it up in this area. So like I said, with fibs, fibs are not perfect. There's many ways to draw them. And if I was to draw this on the hourly chart, right? If I was to draw it from this impulsive move, we still get a pretty healthy move right around that 39.40 level. So if price taps back into this area here this week, I'll probably look to get long. Um, I like the support level looking left. I like the the 30, sorry, the 50% retracement, and I like the edge finder confirmation bias to the upside. So this to me looks like a setup. If we get that pullback this week, if we get sellers coming in, I will be looking to long the S&P 500 uh, and pick that one up in my, in my personal trading accounts. So um, something I will be looking out for, for sure, is the S&P on the long side. Let's take a look at the Euro. Uh, the Euro, pretty strong here recently, and if we look at the four hour chart, a very healthy overall uptrend. Um, for Euro bulls out there, we can probably say it's it's been moving pretty closely to the S&P 500. You've also got some support levels here at the 1.0721. Uh, that could be of interest if price does give you that pullback. There may be some buyers who are interested in just kind of trend continuation uh, playing this one. I'd like to look at the euro on the smart money tracker. Sorry, not the market heat map, the smart money tracker and see where the euro is. It has a pretty long interest at 69.72% from institutional traders. So lots of buy interest overall, um, which can be an interesting little thing to pay attention to. So big money seems to be net long the euro. And I'd like to actually check the euro dollar specifically for a second. Let's go open up the euro USD. Uh, and what we can see here is we get a neutral bias. There's not much here, but seasonality wise and retail sentiment, this is what I wanted to pay attention to. The crowd crowd here, as the euro continues to march higher, the crowd is trying to short it. So this tells me 
don't be short tells, tells me more to be on the long side because when it comes to retail crowds, I don't want to be in the majority. I'd rather be in the minority because retail traders tend to be on the wrong side of the market very, very often. And so that's kind of where I'm at with this one. I'd be more interested on the long side of anything, but there are other things that I like a bit more. And we'll go back to the, the watch list here for a second and see if there's anything else that's jumping out to me. If I'm going to be long euro pairs, instead of dollar, maybe I'm looking at euro pound. And this is one that's been on my watch list for the last few weeks. I took a trade. I made some money uh, back before the new year. And this actually looks quite interesting to start out the week. I'm surprised I hadn't noticed this already. Check this out. So euro pound from the swing low to the swing high just tapped into the 38.2%. This also lines up with a previous level of resistance in this zone. Now it's a bit of a choppy zone, but what you can see is that resistance came in over here, but price was able to break clean above with this pre, uh, recent price action and a pullback into this area. If you're looking to get long the euro pound, I would say this area looks pretty interesting. Of course, this is my opinion. I can be wrong. I'm wrong often with my trading, but remember, it's not about how much you make uh, on just the next trade. It's about how much you make over time. And it's also about, of course, how big your wins are compared to your losses. So if I take this trade, it'll be shared inside of the Discord channel. It's definitely on my watch list. Remember, you can see all of my trades within here. And as I mentioned earlier, I have been doing the, uh, or, or we've been doing the, uh, the sale this week. It is ending today. So if you want access to the group, get access for 20% off, 20% off your membership cost. Uh, you could do the one-time fee. It's not a recurring fee, uh, or you can get the monthly access if you want that. Um, but take advantage of that sale if you've been wanting to join us. It's a great time. The year has just started and trading is just getting going. So it's a great time to join us uh, within the group. So there you go. And also, by the way, uh, I should have mentioned this already as well. The Edge Finder is also on sale, that software I've been using. I use it every single day in my trading, on the live streams, during my videos, etc. Make sure to grab access to the Edge Finder. If you don't already have it and you'd like a copy, you can take advantage of that sale. It is linked also in the description for you. You just punch in that promo code to get access. So I do like Euro Pound on the long side. And uh, let's see if there's anything else. So uh, you've got a lot of things to look through. I'm not gonna do all of them because of course we would be here all day, but we could take a look at one more. Let's, we've done some pound pairs. We've done, uh, how, about, how about CAD yen very quickly on the sell side, CAD JPY, and look at this. This one is an interesting one. This one looks like it might be one more for the breakout traders, for the, for the momentum traders. This is an interesting one. We're back below 100. We're sitting at a level of support. If price can break through the support, this is a daily level of support. If this level breaks, it could be pretty strong for momentum traders to look to get involved in, right? So if it breaks out and you're able to locate this on a lower time frame, look for some continuation moves, this 95, 60 level actually looks quite interesting. So again, what I'd be looking for predominantly here would be a breakout underneath the lows. So right? Looking for some strong close. Ideally, you know, tagging something like 9460, just getting decisively under these lows and then pullback plays for continuations. That is probably going to be it for you uh, this week, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in to this week's Sunday analysis. And remember, join us in the group if you haven't already. Link is in the description. Thank you for watching. See you inside.